bit of a flip for you today. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to my take at the lake. I've been working on this for quite a while, and I've been so excited to share it with you and bring it here. I'm kind of doing it ahead of schedule or ahead of myself. It's not finished, but I'm going to show you anyway. For years and years, I kept this this as a book list, a reading list, so many books, so little time. Uh, it's a collection of when I find things that I want to read, I snip it out or print it out or whatever and stick it in these pockets. So these pockets are packed with things that I want to read. And then for a long time, every time I read a book, I made a list of all my like my first books and my early books and then whatever year this was oh then I wrote down all the books I could remember reading even though I couldn't remember when but then eventually in 2001 I started keeping track of books that I read each year with some notes this is 2002 then I went back to grad school and it just got too much between the reading I was doing at grad school and the reading I was doing for book club and the reading I was doing for work. And it just got to be too much and so I, I stopped doing this. But of course I never got rid of it. I mean there's there's lots and lots of pages to be filled. Part of me wants to pick it up again and do it and part of me thinks that this is the old way. I don't know. I might still jot stuff down. But what I what I wanted to do was make an altered book. And so I made this for myself from it's an altered book that I got on the free table at the library. And I made as I do a digital kit for myself about a year's worth of reading through the seasons, summer, spring, winter, and fall. And they just have different views. Like this is the perfect place to read. This is a perfect place to read, always with a view of the water. And I just placed them hither and yon throughout this book. Here are some nondescript seasons this looks like summer to me. There's no color in the leaves and no snow on the trees, so I'm thinking it's summer, and it's a deck. Isn't that cool? Fire's lit, candles are lit, cool lighting, lots of blankets and pillows. This one has a little fireplace in it. Again, I don't know what season it is, but it sure looks cozy. But I do have, I have snow around it, so maybe it's a winter one. I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe it's sand. I don't know. And then just some other sort of books are magic. I heard a great quote today that said, words have power. That's why they call it spelling. I love that. And this reminds me of that. These pages that have pictures on them, I made into pockets to tuck those bits and pieces in about things I want to read. I found a little, I think this is a magazine picture, and I said book club of one. Again, this is from my library, a discarded book. Obviously winter. I started this, I think, last winter, and I and I just got back to it recently. But I loved having the winter scenes. I mean, there's nothing like cozying up with all those blankets and pillows and watching the snow fall all day long. Oh my god. There's just nothing better than that, I don't think. Another pocket for tuckables. This I thought was really cool. This is a bit of a side note, but we're talking about books and reading. This is a book called The Novel Cure, From Abandonment to Zealous Zestlessness. 751 books to cure what ails you. It encourages you to not dwell in your misery, but focus on the positive. Look for the green shoots. This person... Berthund, 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 there's no N in there, I don't know. This author is a practicing bibliotherapist in the School of Life, a bookstore and learning center in London. Janet, you should go there. Tell me what it's like. Her clients describe her trouble, describe their troubles to her, a significant loss, 
a chronic illness, a midlife crisis, and she prescribes fiction titles to help them cope. Reading a novel can be immensely comforting, she says. When you see your own experience reflected back at you, you realize that others have gone through these difficulties or tragedies or heartbreaks and have come out on the other side. Books can hold a mirror up to our own experience, letting us see ourselves in new ways. We work through our own emotions by living through characters, passions, and crises. I thought that was so interesting. I haven't read the whole article. I tucked it in here to be read eventually, you know, because who has time to read a whole article? <laughs> That's terrible. The other thing that I did is I went to Canva and I made some digital images specifically for books that I want to write about in here. So this reading journal isn't going to be just a general journal. It's going to be about the books that I enjoyed the most, that made the most impact, the most memorable for me. And one of them is The Little Girl Who Lives Down the Lane. Now, I talked about this a while back on my channel. I loved the movie when I was a kid. It came out in the 70s and I I was, I just had such a crush on the, magi the magician. He was so adorable and and I, I've always liked Jodie Foster. A very, very young Martin Sheen plays the bad guy in here beautifully. Plays him very well. Anyway, so I just took different... And I, I love that movie forever. I had no idea it was originally a book. And at a thrift haul, last fall, I think, I found a like-new copy of the book. Read it that weekend. And... It's almost verbatim, the movie. It's just like reading the screenplay. They changed very little from the book to the movie. And I made myself places to write about this, why I liked it, when I read it, whatever, book notes. And I realized that this one page, number one, I didn't put lines in it. Number two, this wouldn't be enough. I had already made this and it was too small. So I just salvaged it and used it as a another place to journal about it and then took a, a screenshot one of my favorite pictures from the movie uh, and just made the transparency quite light and then added lines so I could continue to write about this book here 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 if I want to here and here I also added a Stephen King spread he's He's one of my favorite people on the planet Earth. I've only read a handful of his books. I've seen most of the movies. But I prefer reading about him as a man and an author and a human being versus his work. I love some of his work. Dolores Claiborne, if you've not read it, get it on audio tape. It's an amazing listen. It is so well done on audiobook. I, I just love him. His book on writing here, this is the cover that came out with the original hardcover. I own this book in every conceivable format. I got it in hardcover on Halloween the day it came out. When it came out in trade paperback, I got that. When it came out in mass market sized pack paperback, I got that. When it came out on audio, I got that. I have it in, as an MP3 on my MP3 player. This is a new cover. I don't have this one yet. I'm going to have to try and get a hold of that one. But I've read it and read it and read it. I love I love the book because it's a lot about who he is. He's one of the most normal, down-to-earth, honest Joes there are. People think he's such a weirdo because he played into that in the 70s and 80s. He was getting brand deals and whatnot and they were paying him to be creepy. He's not creepy. He's not at all creepy. I've watched countless hours of him talking at universities and giving speeches and presentations and whatnot. They're all over YouTube. If you want to get to know him as a person, amazing. Just an amazing guy. And what I find hilarious is that in the 70s he was giving he was giving talks, late 70s, early 80s, and he still uses the same jokes and some of the same stories. <laughs> but he's such a good storyteller, they never ever get old. There is a 
a story that he tells about walking hand in hand with his wife, he married his college sweetheart. They've been married ever since. He adores her. And they're walking hand in hand in Naples, Florida, going to see a movie. And and this guy, all decked out, obviously he's going to a fancy affair of some sort because he's in the suit and tie and he's all 80s up. He's got his big gold chains and hairy chest and big gold rings and a Rolex. And, and he just, he's sitting in his, I think they said he had a Mercedes and the Mercedes got a flat. And he sees Stephen King and his wife walking up and he goes, hey, bub, come here. And he tells Stephen King, I'll give you 15 bucks. I'll give you 10 bucks if you change my tire. I can't get my suit dirty. <laughs> Clearly not a reader. No idea who he's talking to. Like the, the world's richest writer and you're offering him $10 to funny, 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 funny story. And then he also has another story in the same, I think it's the same presentation about having dinner with Bruce Springsteen and having a fan float over to them with their eyes big like saucers to get one of their autographs. Phenomenal stories. I'll find it. I will link that below. Just great, great, great storyteller. Obviously, that's what he's born to do. So I have my Stephen King spread. This looks like something someone created on AI. It is just beautiful with, you know, bits and pieces of all of his Stephen King universe. Uh, some early bits of his writing when he used to write a, a neighborhood newsletter with his brother. Some of his handwritten often. I don't know if he still does, but he used to write his manuscripts by hand. You can't really see it because this is where I'm going to write, but it's Stephen King with his corgi, his feet up on his desk, editing one of his manuscripts. Just an old typewriter. I think this is from The Shining, and it says, I can't remember what it says. All, all work and no play makes a makes Jack a dull, dull boy, or something like that. About Jack Torrance and The Shining, and he just keeps writing the same thing over and over and over again. Kind of creepy. Another AI generated with the skull hand and it stacks of books and this his snow globe and the hobbler. I'm your number one fan. And then the background, I put all of these Stephen King, just a whole bunch of his book titles. He got some sort of medal of honor from the president. I love this fishbowl of many of Stephen King's. There's a couple in here that are not Stephen King's creations. And so it kind of, but it's pretty cool. Uh, there's that picture of Stephen King with his feet up on his desk, and his old brother type word processor, phones with cords, another brilliant AI generated thing, and a quote from him, books are uniquely portable magic. Love it. And he's just a guy. He's just a dude. He's not a creepy guy. He's not weird. He's not psychopathic. He's just bloody brilliant. Books are magic. There's the book nooks. I have some more pictures. There's quite a few pictures to this kit that I have not placed yet because I'm not sure where I want them or if I want them because in here these lists are books that I want to add. Each one of these is going to have at least one spread, probably two pages or more, so I can write about them. And so this book is going to fill up pretty quickly. Another one of my favorite books is Stephen King's The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. I did really enjoy that book, except for the very last part at the end. Does not meet my, does not meet my standards. Anyway... I'm bringing this to you to show you, you know, just another thing that you can do with an altered book. I'm not doing like I normally do, like prep the whole book. As I glue things in, like when I did the Stephen King pages, I tore some pages out, made my pockets, and then glued my my digital parts in. And so I'm I'm tearing out as I go versus prepping the whole book before I start 
which is often what I do. I could also put a traveler style notebook in here if I wanted to tear out some instead of in the middle like I normally do for my foreign ones tear out maybe just one of these signatures and then I could put a traveler style notebook in here and have even more places to write. I'm figuring out as I go so I don't know the answers yet but I've been so jazzed about making this and starting to fill it in and and find you know go back and rediscover or rethink about those books that I liked so much. I just wanted to share that with you and of course I am putting the digital kit that I made. It won't have all the Stephen King stuff. It has, it's a book nook. It has these book nook pictures in it. Uh, this, this kind of thing, generic reading, reading nooks. Some, I think that, I think this is in there. I think it's a 20, 22 page kit and that is this month's Patreon gift. For my lovely, lovely Patreon peeps, um, I may be changing some things around there uh, as I as I think about this. But for right now, for a whopping five dollars a month, and you can just go for one month, get it for one month. There's got to be I don't know, ten digital kits there for five bucks. You know the way it's set up right now, you can go in, get everything you want, and leave. Um, I'm not sure that's the best way to run it, but that's how it is right now. And if you want to take advantage of that and go for $5, that'd be great. You know, that's fine. There's never a contract or, you know, once you sign up, you don't have to stay forever. You can just go for a month, check it out if you don't like it. But every month I do do some sort of digikit or behind the scenes or some kind of Patreon thank you. I'm not great at Patreon shoutouts. I'm not sure how private people are. I'm kind of goofy about my name being shouted all over in the internet, so I don't know. I don't know. So I, I don't do that very often. I apologize, but I do appreciate every one of my Patreon peeps, free followers, paid followers. There's also, right now, I am putting the finishing touches on my Get to Know Your Palette workshop. There are plenty of videos there right now to get you started. The intro video, the supplies video, the housekeeping video, the terms and glossary videos, and some of the color trials are there right now. That is at the $25 a month tier. And I kind of look at that as commun like a community ed. You'd pay 25 bucks to go get a watercolor workshop at your local community ed place. Uh, we're kind of mid-month and, and all the color trials aren't up. I don't know if you could get it all done in two weeks for the $125, so it might cost you 50 bucks. You know, stay for two months and get, get the watercolor workshop, but still it's a screaming good deal because it's going to be at least 100 when it's on another platform. So right now there's a lot of screaming good deals on my Patreon, and if you haven't noticed, there is a Krabby Crafter Clubhouse for $3 a month. Actually, it's $2.99 a month. And you get early access and some Krabby Crafter Clubhouse exclusive videos, my saltier stuff, some community posts and discounts and things that are just for Krabby Crafter Clubhouse members as well. So there's a lot going on at the channel. And I appreciate everyone who's watching and taking the time to comment. Please make sure you're subscribed. If you have two seconds, hit share and throw it on a Pinterest board or put it on your Instagram feed or all of those little things that are free in just a couple clicks and a few seconds of your time make an enormous difference to the channel. If it's good enough to share, please do so. And until we meet again, you have a lovely, lovely... Crafty day, go love up your beasties. You're a funny girl. Hey, old Betsy. You crazy? You're so, oh my goodness. It just doesn't get any cozier than that. Such a good girl. My take at the lake. Out for now.